You uh, so you broke down the OPS plus on the on the hitting side. I just I just Ooh, I the truly, pitching side. Truly love OPS plus. Let me. Let no me. fucking clue what the plus means. Can someone define that? For me? What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another edition of Beyond the Diamond Podcast here on the Apollo Podcast Network. Brian Lalima, Apollo Dez, producer Josh here with you. Follow us on Twitter at blima790 at Apollo Dez one at Josh Droz one and of course at Apollo H O U Dez. Josh, how we feeling, boys? ALCS game number one is tonight as we record this at about eleven o'clock. Yankees coming to town. They partied last night. They beat the Guardians round three of the ALCS for the Yankees and Astros. Of course, they met in 2015 in the wild card, but this is the third time, 2017, 2019, and now 2022 that they've met in the ALCS. How are we feeling uh, before game one? Chapter four. It's great. Um, The Astros have been able to make us spoiled, and we said it last episode. I'll say it again. The entire month of October is just international open waters. Like nothing, like do we work? Do we not work? Are we eating bad? Are we drinking? Like it's just day to day and it's the coolest thing ever. And um, to be able to, one, show off home field advantage tonight for game one of the ALCS, pumped for that. Two, it's a little crisp out. Yeah. And it's finally October baseball. We're going, yeah. obviously, hoodie, jersey combo, elite combo. Best, the, I think, one of the I think best the combos. Best combos. Yes, I'm, I, I get agree. jealous. Yeah. I get jealous from everyone up north when they get the rocket. Right. And I may be 60 degrees out, but I'm, I'm rocking it's the best the, jersey combo. Oh, best. Best way to rock a jersey, hands down. Roof closed. Yep. We For talked games about one it. and two. We don't know about game two yet. We don't know about game two. Okay. So thought maybe, I thought I saw that it was TBD. Closed. TBD. Okay. TBD. Um, before we jump into the series, are you roof open or roof closed guy? Um, playoffs in the playoffs. Playoffs. I love like we were talking about off air. We went to the Astros World Series game number two last year against the Braves, in which they won. The roof was open and it was fucking beautiful. Backdrop. I love the roof open. I understand why it's going to be closed. You can make the case that it's a lot louder with the roof closed. Um, especially with the Yankees in town, you want the roof closed. But uh, yeah, I think I'm a roof open guy. Just it was fucking. I mean, now of course it's got to be the right weather here in Houston. You're not opening the roof on an 80 degree night in the middle of the summer. Oh yeah. Sorry, it's too freaking muggy out. So tonight on a night like this, it's like what 58 degrees out right now. By first pitch tonight, it'll probably be down around I don't know mid 50s, and then maybe drop to low 50s in the middle of the game. That would be perfect. No humidity. Nice little breeze coming through. I would say open the roof, but I get it. I understand why. So I'm a roof open guy. They can open it after the win. Ooh, oh, sassy. Wow, okay. Producer Josh, you're sassy. a roof open guy or closed? I'm a roof open during the regular season guy, roof closed during the playoffs. Okay. I, so, I don't know why they, they didn't open the roof for all those home games at the end of September, early October. Well, because it was 100 degrees out, Josh. It wasn't, it wasn't for like a week there. They're there true. Was, there was like, but still, it's like 95 degrees games, out. There was a handful of games where it was like 60 degrees out and... They still have the roof closed. So I don't know why. Yeah. But playoffs, you want it loud, and they seem to play better with it closed. So We talked about it last episode, and uh, the, the feeling is the Yankees are going to play up to the Astros for everything the Astros have done to them over the last seven years and just being their daddy. But it really feels like teams that play Alabama in college football, where that opposing team is going to throw all their gadget plays, they're going to do all their trick plays, they're going to do fake punts, they're going to do fumble rooskies. And the adrenaline is going to dump at some point in the game. And Alabama's going to do Alabama things. The Astros are going to do Astro things. The, A- the Yankees are going to play up. They're going to be jazzed up. Obviously, it's I, I feel bad in the sense that MLB has fucked all this up scheduling. Yankees just clinched game five. <laughs> yeah. Turn around champagne showers, which was bold. That was very bold. And then flying a plane to Houston late last night. Um, but... Hey, that's the hand that's dealt. The Astros took care of business, and we talked about it. When you execute, you get to set your lineup. You get to set your rotation. They don't have that privilege. So um, going into game one, it's Justin Verlander versus the hometown kid, Jameson Talon. And, uh, I mean, it's advantage Houston. And even though JV didn't look good, um, you have to think the Cy Young Award winner is going to bounce back in, in a big way. And what better way against the freaking New York Yankees? Yeah, and, and Justin Verlander said in his media availability yesterday that – he found a couple of tweaks that he had to make mechanically um, after, 
you know, his first outing of the playoffs in the ALDS where he lost that ball game. Well, actually, they won, but but it was no decision, whatever. He didn't pitch well. Um, he managed to get through, I think, six innings, even though he gave up six runs. Jordan with the walk-off bomb, obviously. Um, he, got through, one, he got through four innings. No, more than that. He only pitched four? He only pitched four. And no then, way. And Javier yeah. came in for two. Wow, I thought he I thought he was able to get through six. Okay, my bad. Uh, fact check on that. But um, the thing, another thing he said was after the calf strain this season, there were things that he had to tweak and remember about his lower body. And Adam Wainwright, he he referenced Adam Wainwright for the Cardinals. One of the things that Adam Wainwright said after the season that basically those losses were on him because he didn't take care of his lower body. So Justin Verlander um, being well aware of his body, that's why he's been able to pitch. He's 39 years old right now, um, or is he 38? 38, about to be 39, something like that. He's going to pitch into his 40s, but he's made a concerted effort to be more focused on his lower body, coming off of that calf strain, making adjustments, and then you saw the game one outing. Didn't pitch well. Um, I'm excited to see what tweaks he makes mechanically. And, you know, again, it's against the Yankees. So what a better time than to come off of a poor pitching performance, if you will, poor, um, and then fix it against the Yankees in the ALCS at was, home. It was piss poor. I'll yeah. say that. Um, I, I think you, you nail it. And, and the fact of the matter is this. All roads led to Yankees Astros. Yeah. Like from May, maybe maybe before May, we were just like, this is the two best teams in the American League. They're going to play each other to win a pennant and represent the American League in the World Series. And we have it. But it shifted over the last six months. The Astros, it was all about the Yankees. They're on pace to 125 games. They're on blah, 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 blah. They only won 99. The Astros did the damn thing, just chugged along. Pretty steady throughout the whole just season. Just very meticulous, 106 wins. Number one seed, home field advantage. Um, orange breathing fire. Uh on Twitter, had a really good blog out. You can follow him at at orangefire underscore. And it's about this matchup. And he has a really cool graphic on here about the OPS plus of the Yankee hitters and the Astros. Obviously, we know what Judge has done, right? He had an OPS plus of 211, the second highest next to Barry Bonds in the history of baseball. Absurd. Jordan Alvarez right behind him at 187. Now, take those two guys out. The rest of the lineups, where do you think... The Yankees' number two hitter fits in with the Astros' hitters. If you were to take the Yankees' number two OPS plus, and I'll give it to you, it's Anthony Rizzo, where would he be in line with the Astros' regular season OPS plus of the batters? Ooh, um, probably towards the lower half. Altuve, 160. Bregman, 133. And Tucker, 128. Rizzo would slot between Tucker and Bregman at 131. So the fourth best okay. Astro. After that, it's Glaber Torres at 114. Uh, Chaz McCormick was at 110. Yeah. Stanton at 113. Obviously, yeah. Stanton's a different beast in October. He's yeah. he's actually yeah, we saw he's a problem. We saw they, it against problem. the Guardians. That's how most of their lineup is yeah. just able to just smack a home run at any at any time. Their fourth best hitter is LeMayhew, who's not even on the ALCS. Yeah, I mean, not the playing. ALCS lineup. So, and, they, and they lost Aaron Hicks. He's out Correct. officially for the rest of the season. So, so you, have, you have a lot of factors going in. The Astros can set their... Rotation. You're gonna have your, your your set guys going, where Yankees have to start their number four guy today yep. in a bullpen game. Essentially, it'll probably be JMO then Herman, Savvy tomorrow, and then you have Cole and Nestor going against the Astros three and four. So obviously you got to win the two at home, but I still think we pair up well uh, when we go to New York. The thing about the seven gamers, uh, it's just there's so much room for margin of error. I love it. Like five gamers scare the fuck out of me. Seven gamers, I am ecstatic. I, yeah, yeah. We'll give our official predictions at the end, but seven you, gamers you just make ha- me. You can play the oh. worst baseball over the span of like three days and still have a chance to. We win. literally, <clears throat> literally gave up five grand slams in game two last year. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> then got our asses handed us in game three. Then somehow stole game four. Then at game five, Framber throws the game of his life. All of a sudden, we're up 3-2 in the ALCS yeah, when we were just like last just year. It's it's it. all about momentum in October. Yeah. And we're just built differently this year. And, and it goes back to pitching. Tonight, it's, our depth is... It's insane. It's yeah. absolutely insane. And that's... I don't know if it's just luck me, me, meaning preparation or, or Lunau meaning click and like everything. But it's like in 18, you had your, your dogs and... But after that, you really didn't have anything. 
and then you had guys get banged up. In 19, you had your, your top two dogs. You didn't, have, you didn't have Lance. 2020, COVID year, didn't have JV. 21, didn't have JV. Lance was your guy. Like It's now like this perfect storm of everyone that was not ready in the past years that had to step up, and they did step up in good ways or bad, got their October experience, and then we got all the horses back, and it's just like this perfect storm of this depth that... Jose Urquidy has won like three World Series games. He didn't pitch one single inning right. in the DS. This has been, when you look at the golden age of Astros baseball that we've seen basically since 2015. This is the best team. This is the most clear path for the Astros to win a World Series. 100%. Braves eliminated. Dodgers eliminated. Tampa eliminated. Toronto eliminated. Phillies may be a problem. You've got the Yankees who, their pitching rotation you're going to see Garrett Cole game three. You're going to see Nestor Cortez game four, and that's probably it. You yeah. won't see them again unless it's on three days rest You'll have or to face all hands Cole on seven. All right, like that's three it. Three days rest. Yeah. Three days rest. That's it. And let me because of the way that the ALDS wins, because they couldn't take care of the freaking Guardians. Yeah. And then you've got the Astros rotation where it's set up perfectly. You had two days. You had a couple of days rest. You had Verla You got Verlander. Pitching on full rest. You have them foaming at the mouth. You've got Framber going. I mean, everything is lined up absolutely perfectly. Oh, by the now, way. Now, just go out and take care of business. You have Lance McCullers Jr. pitching a game three in New York where he'll thrive. In yeah. That. Oh, and by the way, Christian Javier, right. who already no-hit you in your stadium earlier this summer. As your fourth, <laughs> yeah, fourth, yeah, as your fourth. Speed, you uh, so you broke down the OPS plus on the on the hitting side. I just, I just, Ooh, I the truly, pitching side? truly love OPS plus. Let me, let no me. fucking clue what the plus means. Can someone define that for plus, me? Plus, basically, it's just bringing all the factors of the ballpark in this situation. So, so like, if like I play, co if I play in cores, gets graded down, gr gets graded down oh, because they, the ball flies there. Correct. They've gotcha. calculated all the other. Factors. Got wow. So it's the purest. And of so pure. 100, 100 wow. is average. Okay. Over like 130, 140, that's like all star. And then like 160 plus is, is elite. Elite. Gotcha. Wow. Aaron Judge had a 211. Uh, elite. Plus. Elite. Elite. Holy shit. Okay. Um, so I on, the, on the flip side, ERA, ERA plus is the same kind of thing. Okay. It's just a good benchmark to. Yeah. Because you could be filthy, but you're in Colorado and right. chilled. And so. Um, the Yankees, their team had two pitchers over an ERA plus of 150. That is Nestor Cortez and Clay Holmes, They're the reliever. He's the, the other yeah, one was Michael good. King, but he's he got he has his season ended in July. Um, the Astros have one, two, three, <laughs> four, five, six, seven over 150. Christian wow. Javier is 152. Rafael Montero has 163. Lance Picolas Jr. at 171. Brian Abreu at 200. Justin Verlander at 220. Ryan Stanek at 336. Huh. And Hunter Brown at 443. And that's a very short, you know, that's only 20 innings for Hunter Brown, but still. Yeah. Um, the, yeah. The, overall, I mean, they it just, and then under that, they still have. Every pitcher is above 100 except for Urquidy's at 98. Right. And Urquidy, how many games did he win this year? 14, 13, something like that? 13, yeah. 13 games this year, and he didn't even pitch in the ALDS? No. <laughs> so, I mean, come on. Yeah, the, the pitching I mean, side is just – they they're very so, top-heavy. And if if, like you said, if Cole and Cortez are only going once, right. maybe twice. Right. No, it won't be – Nestor Cortez won't throw twice. No. Garrett Cole will have to throw on three days rest if it gets to that yeah, point. Nestor yeah. would Nestor would have to go off like two days rest and be a you know all hands maybe, on deck. Yeah, maybe type situation. Give him three yeah, outs. they'd be smart if they switched him to just being a just on the fly switched him to being which we could very much guy. we could very easily see that. Well, the thing is this, and I think look in baseball you you have to throw the ball to the plate. You can't run out the clock. We we all know the yeah. hyperboles. This team on paper is better than the New York Yankees, and they're going to be jazzed up, ready to play for losing a 15, 17, and 19. But I think the only thing that gets in the Astros' way is the Astros themselves. Yeah. The pitchers have to throw strikes. They yeah. have to fill up the zone. The Yankees, they can they can grind at bats and they, they walk. And that's been the bugaboo. And I think this Yankee team being jazzed up to play the Astros with everything in the past, 
they'll convert more than we saw Seattle because Seattle, we the walks were there. I mean, we we can't tiptoe around it. There's a, a a shit ton of walks. Yeah, and they didn't capitalize yeah. and execute. Um, you can't bank you on can't, another yeah. team doing that because if they do execute, now you're all of a sudden okay. Well, you get two walks, and then all of a sudden Stanton is yeah. up. And, and, and we saw it. We saw it in Game Five. Yeah, you, you Savelli came out. You know, was around the zone, not really filling it up. And Stanton takes it, you know, in the right field, just thirteen off like that. Just. So I think I think the Astros' game plan, and they know. I mean, we're not we're over here just shit posting on the internet. Yeah. Is to fill up the strike zone, attack batters, um, and it starts with Justin Verlander because game one for him it was fastballs up in the zone, slider just kind of he was just picking out of spots, um, and, and then just get it to the next guy and and that from offensively and in the pitching rotation, get it to the next guy, get it to the person to um, close the gap, close the game. And I, and I really truly think there's probably five games within a game. There's the one, there's the first through thir- thir- first through the third inning. That's one game. And then you have the fourth through the sixth. That's one game. And then seventh innings, his own game, the eighth inning, his own game, yeah. the ninth. inning. so there's five games within a nine inning game, I think, and if you if you're winning three of those, yeah, you're gonna win the ball game. So um, they're set up well, and I'm excited. I'm excited that the fans are gonna be packed. Obviously, downtown right now, this this podcast will be out the day of Game One. Uh, a lot of orange already. Yeah. yeah, there's a lot of orange when, downtown already. When you look at uh, the Yankees as a team this season, they walked 620 times. They struck out 1,391 times. It's almost 1,400. Um, Flip with, side of that, the Astros. You got. You were gonna say the Astros. Or, no, do you have the, the Astros? Astros yeah, what are the Astros? The Astros walked five hundred and twenty-eight times. Yep, and struck out uh, one thousand one one thousand one hundred seventy-nine. Yeah, so I think that's the difference. Is the Astros don't strike out as much. The Yankees are such a big swing and miss team. Um, you know, it's such a cliche, but just throw strikes. Yeah, just throw strikes. Yeah. Cut down all the walks and, and you know, you've got a good defense behind you. And I think, you know, uh, the, the little things, man, it's, it's um, you know, if you get guys on second and third, you have to, you know, you have to execute and get those guys in. And another thing is base running. I know we didn't really see, obviously, in the sweep, it's a, it's a little different. But, you know, in a seven-game series, base running, right? And we've seen yeah. we some made, bad base, base running. Some, yeah, we made some yeah. mistakes. We've seen bad base running. Um, and I think when you look at the lineup, is the roster still not out? Still not out. It was, it was, it, it was supposed to be. It, it was uh, had to be submitted to the league by 10 a.m. So it's in. This just just hasn't been released yet. But um, when you look at the lineup, you know Altuve's got to get going, which I think we all know. He's struggling in the ALDS. Didn't look comfortable at the plate. Swung in a lot of bad pitches. Fanned at everything. I mean, you can keep going on and on about his at bats. But you know, he said to the media yesterday that um he took some live bp off of blake taylor um he said you know the swing felt better and he'd look forward to how it's how it felt today if there's a guy it's like it's like what aj hinch did with uh george springer when he struggled in the yeah. alcs back keep in 2017 him, keep him out there. yeah you keep him there if there's anybody that's earned the right to struggle a little bit and work through it it's jose altuve he said so, to uh, brian mctire well, i don't know if he said it to brian mctire but brian tweeted this um altuve quoted I wasn't focused on getting my pitch, and that's what I worked on in the season. Yeah, so, so he he lost his his way a little bit. Yeah, so that, I think in. that that just kind of shows you that the mentality wasn't wasn't right in the ALDS. I do think a good primer going into this series, and I'll, I'll give credit to the Yankee fans they, they they're they're raucous, right? The yeah. Bronx is going to be crazy. They, they, it's look, one Houston. I think the thing about the Yankees fans is they're all together, whether they're talking shit about their own players or talking shit about opposing <laughs> yeah. fans and players. Like they all stay they together. They all stay together. Yeah. Um, I think that Seattle crowd was going to be it was a good primer. I mean, obviously the Astros get hate wherever they go, right? But I think as a, it was like okay, like I, there was a lot of that bats where you could tell the guys were pressing a bit, and I we got it out of the way. Um, so um, obviously facing Garrett Cole in that crowd is going to be a little loud, but yeah. Um, hopefully you're up two on that spot. But going into tonight, I think the Astros. I mean, the the city shows up in the playoffs for sure. Yeah. Um, it's going to be loud. Um. You're hoping JV gives you a solid five six and just hand it off to the next guy. I mean, you very well not even touch your pin today. You can very, very, very well go JV 
Brown, JV, yeah, Brown, if, or if, Hobby. You have a, if you have a lead, you throw I th- Arkady in there. I think yeah. like four more. I think if you if you can utilize Brown here at home in games one or two, do it. Give yes. him confidence. Yeah. yeah, get him back into a rhythm in yeah. the ALCS yeah. because you don't want the first experience in the ALCS against the Yankees in the Bronx. In, in like, the Bronx. I don't give a shit what anybody says. Going out there as a rookie, like that's going to be that's high really leverage, yeah. regardless of the score situation. Yeah, his he's going to have adrenaline flowing. So if you can utilize him at home. In games one or two, absolutely do it. Get him, get him some time in. Yeah, so Javi's probably not pitching today because he'll if he's your game four starter. That's, that's what I'm gonna that's say. Four I, days I, away, I have yeah. the schedule up right here. Let's go through who we think is starting, who might be used. So game one is today, Wednesday. Obviously JV. Yep. Tomorrow, game Framber. two, Framber. Framber. Then there's an off day, and then game three would be McCullers on Lance. Saturday. Mm-hmm. So then game four on Sunday. Obviously, JV's not going to go. That'd be three days rest. So you go Javi game four, right? Yeah, you go Javi. You probably piggyback Javi. Um, Garcia. Garcia. Javi and Garcia game four. And then JV can go on full rest for game five in New York. Yeah. So With then, your Kitty piggy, piggybacking piggyback, somewhere yeah. in there. So, and, But the last, these are all games in a row. So then game six would be turnaround next day Yeah, that's in Houston. That'd be Framber. So, yeah, it'll be Framber game six. And then, Framber, and then McCullers would game start seven. Game, uh, yeah. potential game seven. Game yeah, game if seven. there's a game seven. So I think the biggest thing is like there's not a lot of days off <sighs> no. with this schedule. One day so, off. so you have to, if you're and Dusty it's... Baker, Joe Espada, Josh Miller, like how you manage your bullpen and your pitch staff is going to be huge. God forbid there's a rain delay. Oh, yeah. Well, good thing Minute Bay Park's got a roof. Well, there's three games. I don't know, I don't know about what's going on up in New York. But, <laughs> if there's um, one rain delay, and that push, there's no days yeah, off. Yeah, so there, there's you have to manage it well. There so I think, no days off. Yeah. I think um, that's where it comes into play with how deep the Astros pitching staff is. Yeah. We just named so many different names, and Jose Arquiti and Luis Garcia were mentioned once. Yeah. So I think you would probably piggyback Lance and Garcia. And that just shows the difference between this year and last year. Combo. Both Arquiti and Garcia started. Yeah, yeah. They started the World Series games. <laughs> That's how big of a game changer that Justin Verlander is. Yeah, and and Lance having right. both of them. Have them this, both. In this. Lance McCullers was the ace last year. Yeah, think about it that way. And this season, for, he's the number three because he was out pretty much. And even even if you, I mean, who knows what would have happened if we would have seen him a whole year of being healthy. Yeah, but he might him, have taken it, over game two, but yeah. Either way, I kind of like the righty lefty righty flipping. Yeah, flipping one two three. So here we go. Saturday in the Bronx, and we can dive into it's a, one of the next episodes. But high of sixty eight, low fifty two, five percent chance. Okay. Uh, Sunday it jumps to thirty percent chance of late p little pm rain, so, so cloudy emoji sixty three fifty three, yeah. and then that Monday is a thirty percent chance right now. Rain and drizzle possible. So that, so. That and that is Apollo Des with weather. With Back weather. to you in the studio, <laughs> Josh. Uh, <laughs> that Monday game is at 3 p.m. And then Oof. they turn around and fly. To the Houston. Monday game's at 3? It's at 3 p.m. They so turn- they play Saturday at 3, mon- Sunday at 2, and Monday at 3? Saturday, Saturday at 4, Sunday at 6, Monday at 3. Okay, so say that again. Saturday at 4. 4 o'clock Eastern. 4 o'clock Central. Five o'clock Eastern. You sure? Yeah, I'm looking. Okay. At, yeah, this is. What, so. You got okay. You got it in front of you. Um, and then Sunday six o'clock Central, and then Monday three o'clock Central, mm. and then they turn around and fly to Houston, and then Tuesday Tuesday's potential game six game would be at five p.m. Central. Damn. Oh shit. Yeah. So if they if they hit rain on that Monday, yikes, and they don't play till late, they got to turn around, and fly, and play at five the next day in Houston. So let's hmm. just sweep them. Yeah, and, sweep and, and, and get it out of the way. <laughs> um, game one, we'll circle back. Let's let's give our predictions. Yes. Oh, speaking of this. Yeah. Um, we have an extra ticket to the game. So to game we one? are going to do standing, a giveaway. Yeah, standing yes. room only. Standing room only ticket. Um, put your predictions down below in the comments, and you'll be eligible to... Be drawn for a SRO ticket for game one of the ALCS. So yep. uh, I have the Astros in five. That is my prediction for the series. Drop your prediction down below. You're automatically eligible, and then we'll do a random drawing. Yep. Uh, I've got the Astros in six. Astros in six. Astros in six. I don't think it goes seven. I think it goes six. Astros in six. 
I have also got the Astros in five. I think potential losses game three in New York with Cole. I think they try and steal some momentum and then we come back in game four and kick their teeth in and take it from there. Those, that's it. Those are the predictions right there. So drop your predictions down below in the comments. You're automatically eligible. Obviously, be be in the city. <laughs> yeah, yeah like, like we're not flying you out. Literally, uh, game. like literally today's after game. After we post this, it's going to be a couple hours from now. So be quick, yeah. and then we will we will get we will message whoever wins and get you your ticket. And while you're here, hit that like button right and there. Subscribe. It's scrap. So um, do we uh, do we want to give Josh another opportunity to to bring us out of here? Bring us out. Or... Yeah, I think there's good mojo <laughs> That's with three it. in a row. Let's no. Let's good let's mojo. keep it going, mojo. right? Keep the yeah. Mojo going, dude. Yeah. Try it, Josh. Thank you for watching. Oh wow. my! Why is he? Why is he? Why is he? Why is he? Um, We're getting thousands of views. We can't even hear him. <laughs> what did he just say? Thank you for watching Beyond the Diamond on the Apollo Podcast Network. My name is Josh. We have John <laughs> <and Josh. laughs> <laughs> all right take us home Brian. peace <laughs> take us home. that's gonna do it game one tonight astros yankees alcs in we, the h in the in at uh it god i can't even talk now <laughs> at minute Maid park be loud wear orange go astros we'll be back in a couple of days to talk about games one and two peace Love oh we guys. didn't even talk about that <laughs>